Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Gareth from Park Cameras, and today we're gonna to be checking out one of the big new features from the Adobe 2021 update to Photoshop. Now we're using the subscription service, we're using the CC version of Photoshop, so part of the Creative Cloud, and every year they bring out a big new update, and the 2021 update is certainly no different. There's actually a bunch of really cool stuff that they've added to Photoshop, but the one we're gonna focus on today, specifically, is the sky replacement tool that has been added. This makes sky replacement in Photoshop unbelievably easy and straightforward. No more kind of making selections and using the color range selector and all that kind of stuff and fiddling about and using dodge and burn to make the edges of the foreground not look weird against the sky and stuff like that. None of that anymore, none of that. It's a few clicks, to be honest. It makes it almost too easy. You know, it's too tempting now to do it. So we're gonna dive in, we're gonna look at how it works, we're gonna talk about it. Let's jump into Photoshop right now. Now I've got a few photos that I think are gonna be good for this. You know, I try to pick slightly busier skylines so it's not too easy, to be honest, because you, you pretty much can guess it's probably gonna work on an easy, like a, the sea. You know, a nice straight horizon and then the sky. It's probably fairly easy to do that one, right? So we've picked some ones that are gonna be a little bit more tricky. A busier skyline. So here we've got the London skyline. As you can see, pretty gray kind of flat lighting, not particularly interesting sky. So let's go ahead and just change this sky out. Now all I've done is bring this photo into Photoshop. I've not done anything. I've literally just brought it in. So we can come straight up here to edit, down to sky replacement, and immediately Photoshop is gonna work out where the sky is it's gonna mask it out. And you can see, there we go, it's done. Now there's a bunch of skies in Photoshop now that you can use to actually replace the sky. So you don't have to have your own skies. Of course you can use your own skies and you can add those in as well, no problem. But if you don't have your own skies, no need to worry. There's a lot of skies in Photoshop now for you to use. Now I've been wondering when this service would come to Photoshop to be honest, because a lot of other editing software has this. So I've been waiting for it to come, but here it is. And you can see it has masked this sky out really, really well. Even behind this wheel here, around this spire, around all these buildings, really, really good. Now, if we wanted to change the sky, obviously it's put in a nice blue cloudy sky there. I think that's the last sky I used, that's probably why. So we can come up here to this new tab that's opened. We've got a picture of the sky we're gonna use. We just click this arrow here to open the drop down menu. You can see there's three folders of sky. Now, these are, the, these are the skies that come with Photoshop. So you've got blue skies, what they call spectacular skies, things like rainbows and storm clouds, and then sunsets as well, which obviously speaks for itself. And the biggest thing, first of all, when you do a sky replacement, if you've never done it before, the key thing is to pick a sky that's gonna work with the photo you've got. So if you've taken the photo in the middle of the day, like this one, you need a sky from sort of roughly the same sort of time. So it's not gonna look completely crazy. I couldn't just put a sunset sky on this photo and expect it to look good. So in this case, we're gonna to wanna to use the blue skies. We're gonna to wanna to use a daytime sky. Actually, this one works perfectly, but if we just open this folder, you can see there's a few here to choose from. We can go ahead and pick a different one. Let's pick this one. That looks pretty cool, but it doesn't look particularly realistic. Let's scroll up, let's try this one. That actually looks really good, I think, but I want a few more clouds in there. So let's go back to this one and let's click that drop down menu to close it again. I think that looks great as is, but there's a few options we've got just below there to, to kind of make it perfect. Now, I think Photoshop does a great job, but if you want to shift the edge of where the sky is, you can use this slider here. We can bring it down to actually change where the sky is. We can bring it back up to move the sky around. And that is a good way of getting it exactly right for your photo. Now, like I say, I think Photoshop does a pretty good job anyway, but this is a good thing to have available to you anyway. And then you've got some sky adjustments to make it fit with the photo. So we can bring the brightness up, which is probably what I'll do in this case. We can change the color temperature, so let's warm it up a little bit. And we can adjust the scale. So for example, I can make the sky, the scale is kind of much bigger and you can see how that affects it. And let's bring it back down. Now that's good depending on the kind of photo you've got. You know, it depends if you've got a wide photo or you've used a long telephoto lens, for example, you're gonna wanna change the sky accordingly. And I think that's that's really handy to have in there. Of course, we can flip it as well, which doesn't really matter here, but for a sunset photo, that probably would be a key thing. Then we can make some foreground adjustments. So we've got the lighting mode, we've got multiply, we can use screen as well. I find that I'm mostly using multiply, but it is a case-by-case -case thing. So you wanna just check how it looks with each photo. 
because some are going to look better with screen, some are going to look better with multiply. And then we can adjust the lighting as well on the foreground. Photoshop will do it automatically. So we can we can not do that at all. Or we can adjust the lighting and Photoshop's going to try and match it to the sky a little bit. And the same with a color adjustment here. Now the color adjustment doesn't really have much to do here because the sky is just a pretty normal sky. But if that's a sunset sky, it'd probably warm it up, maybe add a bit of magenta, things like that. So let's go ahead and click OK. We've got the option here to output to new layers, which is what I would always suggest. We can use duplicate layers as well, but I would always suggest new layers is the best way to go. So let's press OK. And you can see we've now got everything in layers. We've got our original photo here, which is the background layer. We've got a group, the sky replacement group, which now allows us to control everything. You can see the sky itself. If I hold Alt and just press on the eye icon here, you can see the actual, just the sky there. Because of the way Photoshop actually works, everything is now available in layers for us to edit if we want to. So if you want to go in and adjust that layer mask, absolutely not a problem. If you want to go in and adjust the foreground lighting or anything like that, super easy to do it. You could add a curves adjustment to just the foreground no problem at all, which is what I love about the way obviously Photoshop works and the way this is now implemented within Photoshop. So let's just jump into another photo because this can be so quick and easy. We've got, let's pick this photo here. So let's 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 change this to a sunset. I know that sounds a bit ridiculous because it's a cloudy kind of midday shot, but let's just do it. Let's just show how quick this can be. So we've just brought our photo in, come up to edit. Let's go to sky replacement. Let's wait for it to actually mask out the sky. Also, this is a good photo to actually see how good it is at just masking those uh, those individual bits. I mean, look at how much of a good job Photoshop has done along this edge here. You know, we don't have loads of fringing. And even if we did, we could go in and clean it up, right? With the dodge and burn and all that kind of stuff. Everything's still available to us, but look at how good this is. Considering how, you know, busy this this actually is there's no kind of cutting off of these trees even these little bits of grass and twigs and stuff that is a really really good job so let's zoom back out let's pick a sunset so let's bring down the sunset menu let's go for something like this one here now you can see immediately Photoshop has already started to recolor the foreground a little bit. So let's bring the brightness up a touch on the sky. Not too much. Let's leave the temperature as it is. And let's come down to the lighting adjustment. Let's bring that up to 100. That's going to darken this a little bit. Color adjustment up as well. That's going to really help it to blend. Let's click OK. We've got that all in new layers now. That already looks good. So before was like this and after is like this. But let's just go ahead and add a curves adjustment. So add a new adjustment layer, curves, just above the background photo layer. And let's just darken this up a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more. And there we go, we've made a huge adjustment here in what 30 seconds maybe a minute but in real time it probably would have been about 30 seconds you can see photoshop has done an incredible job of masking this edge but also these two birds in the sky which is really really impressive it knows that there's birds there it's left them in so if we go back to the original we had these two birds here and it's left those in so that we've still got the birds but it's masked the sky it looks really good it's very quick and easy. You know, probably I wouldn't do a sunset on this particular one, but you know, it's a really, really useful tool. So no more crazy times with sky replacement, with masking, with all that kind of stuff. It's super quick and easy now. And honestly, very exciting for landscape photographers, but also for all kinds of stuff, you know, architectural photography, there's loads of applications that this could be used for. Now there's a bunch of other features within the Photoshop 2021 update, which we're going to look at as well, because to me, these are some of the most interesting features that I've experienced for a while. You know, we're gonna look probably at the neural filters next, which affect uh, portraits, 
pretty extensively. I mean, it's pretty crazy, actually. So we're going to do another video on that. So look out for that very soon. Of course, all of this is brought to you by us, Park Camera. So you can check down in the description for links to all of the equipment that was used for these photos and for all this kind of stuff. And generally, check out Park Cameras for all your photographic or video needs or audio, anything like that. Of course, feel free to pop any questions or any thoughts, actually, about all of this down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this new update. Is this useful to you? Do you do sky replacement already? Is this gonna affect you in any way? I'm pretty excited, but I'd love to hear what you think, so pop that down in the comments. I will also do my best to get back to you ASAP for any questions. Make sure to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video. That helps us out enormously. I will see you in the next video, and as always, thanks for watching.